All right, so to kick things off today, I want to introduce Larry Holmes from the Workers' Assembly Against Racism, who's going to come up and get us started because we are out here. We're here to let Starbucks and Amazon workers know that they need to stop their union busting. Friends and comrades, the warriors for the workers and the oppressed, we're here in front of this union busters, swanky $40 million apartment that was made possible by destroying a hospital that served poor people. You got to know the truth. So he could have his multi-level adjoining bullshit $40 million apartment. So you don't, you don't get the sense of these apartments just looking at this quote unquote modest, you know, uh, uh, facade. You go in there, they built a city for rich people. And you got to be rich to get in it. It's ours for rich people. And we're thinking about renaming 12th Street over here, Union Busting Way, in honor of Howard Schultz. But seriously, it's important to be out here. Starbucks, a multinational, multi-billion dollar corporation, and Amazon, which is even bigger, a lot bigger, they're waging a union busting war against workers. A war against workers. It's gonna shout out for Tristan, yeah. Amazon, union organizer. Fire! Fire for organizing. He's why we're here. You know, yesterday, a federal judge in Phoenix upheld Amazon's firing Starbucks. 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 Sorry. Of a young black woman, 19 years old. She was the leader of the union drive in her Starbucks store in Phoenix. Name is Layla Dalton. He upheld her firing and the firing of two of her co-workers who, like the Memphis Seven, they were the organizing team. And this tells us the important news. We can't rely on courts. We can't rely on the NLRB. That's the government. They can smile this way, smile that way, and pretend as though they're democratic and they're your friend. But if we rely on them, you know, we'll, we'll always come up losing. What we need to do to break the back of this union busting war on the working class is mass mobilization. Mass mobilization. And it's up to each and every one of us to be a champion and an organizer for getting more and more people out here. I hate to say this. But it's a shame that we have to organize this. Where's the Central Labor Council of New York? Right. They got a big list of people. They should have thousands of people out here. Yeah. They heard about this. They say they're for it. Right. There are millions of unionized workers. You know, uh, New York is a union town, unlike some places, you know, uh, south of the Mason-Dixon line. You know what I'm saying? So there's no excuse. We've got to do two things. We've got to pressure the labor movement and some of these moderate, all too comfortable labor bureaucrats who are too tied to, you know what, the Democratic Party, which does nothing from them except take their money. We've got to put pressure on them and at the same time, We've got to organize the new regiments in the working class. They're all genders and all ages, but let's face it, a lot of them are young people who are angry and fed up. Gig workers work sometimes, don't work other times. No health insurance, 
no security, no and feeling that they got no future. We've got to organize, comrades. We've got to organize these people to be the shock troops of an anti-union busting crusade that brings thousands and millions of people out in the street. We got, that's the way they did it. That's the way it's always been done. There's a lot at stake here. There's a lot of, this is not just about Starbucks and Amazon. They are big, no doubt about it. This is about Trader Joe's. You know, Trader Joe up in Massachusetts, they just formed an independent union. They say they were inspired by the ALU. Target workers are reorganizing. It's about, you know, whole food stores. This, this is about workers. This is about McDonald's. This is about Roy Rogers. This is about millions of workers, low paid, messed over workers. Many of them women. Many of them women of color. Who are low paid restaurant workers. It's not just about two companies. What we're trying to do here is transform the labor movement, unify it, make it bigger. And us, we are the shock troops. Organized labor should be, but they're not up to it. So we got to pressure them and we got to do it. I also want to shout out for the laundry workers center. Over here. <laughs> These comrades are teaching migrant workers who have been treated like shit, how to stand up against the bosses. They've organized construction workers doing dangerous work, low pay, no health benefits. They get sick, they get infected, that's it. It's their problem. They're organizing these workers in Brooklyn, and more of you have to find out about it. Because part of this thing too, and this should be key, this should be central to our message to Starbucks workers who are oppressed and who are messed over. But there are workers whose conditions are even worse than theirs. And if we're going to transform this workers' movement and unite it, and it has something to really do about uniting and solidarity with all workers everywhere, geography, language, culture, gender don't, don't uh, um, uh, uh, doesn't mean anything, then we got to teach workers who work one place about the situation of workers who work in another area or work in another part of the country. We got to introduce them to farm workers. We got to introduce them to workers down south who work in chicken processing plants. We got to introduce them to day laborers. Go to Queens on some of the streets, 5 a.m. in the morning, 5 a.m. in the morning. Day laborers are waiting for somebody to pick them up for about, I don't know, $50 a day or something like that. This way, workers begin to learn about each other. But I go back to my message. You know, this judge, this federal judge that upheld M. Uh, Starbucks firing of these workers. Next week, a few days from now, ALU leaders, Amazon Labor Union leaders, yeah. are forced to go to Phoenix right. to an NLRB hearing. Amazon did not want the NLRB hearing to be here because they thought it would be too favorable. So they, you know, they sent it to Phoenix. They got to go there. And they've got to defend themselves against pages and pages of charges that right. Amazon has filed against the union. Right. And you know what they want to do? They want to overturn. They want to overturn that April 1st victory yeah. of 8,000 oh. workers. Oh. If the labor movement got the message, there'd be thousands of workers in the streets on that day. I think it's what? The 13th? 13th yeah. The 13th? Yeah, yeah. But we'll get there. Anything worthwhile takes a while. We're going to get there. We're going to change this labor movement. We're going to transform it. And we're going to do it the way that these workers at Starbucks are doing it. 
We're going to do it the way the laundry workers are doing it. We're going to do it the way the Amazon workers. And that's the bottom, bottom up. up. Bottom up, not top down. Woo! So thank you. Thank you for coming out. It's so important. We're going over to Bezos' apartment, which is cost even more money. He's got so many apartments in that building over on 5th Avenue and 26th Street, they might as well call it the Jeff Bezos building. I think they have going to rename it or something. And, and we'll get up in his face. But organize, organize, organize. You know, Howard Schultz has a birthday coming up. July 19th, he's going to be 70 years old. Somebody who's got a lot of imagination, you know, ought to think of something that we can do around that. Whatever. Y'all figure it out. Anyway, stop union busting now. Rehire the Memphis 7. Rehire all of the 30 union organizers that Starbucks has fired over the past three months. Right. Victory to the world. Stay Give a round of applause to Larry Holmes. Woo!